Yes, there's the cock shelter. That's actually rather impressive. Having taken you there several times, you are by now all well familiar with the large bunker complexes here in East Prussia. Hitler's main bunker complex, Wolfschanze, where he spent almost 800 days of the war. But most of you may not know that these large complexes, this one as well as the one for the Army High Command, is very far from all that you can find here in the former area of East Prussia. Of course, during the First World War, several significant battles were fought in this general area, such as the Battle of Tannenberg. But leading up to the Second World War, East Prussia was a German enclave surrounded by Poland and Russia. And before the outbreak of war, the German army began to construct bunkers and fortified lines facing both, just in case the Poles or the Russians would dare strike first. And a lot of the striking came from East Prussia in 1939. The first fortified line you find entering the former East Prussia crossing the Nara River is a cluster of defenses covering possible Polish advance roads and one added shelter constructed in 1944, preparing for the Red Army's advance. But let's start with those in the south here. And not 30 kilometers from the Polish frontier at the time, we start seeing Regelbaus. Also, we're not overly far from Rastenburg and Hitler's Wolf's Lair. Today, this is being used for storage for the territorial defense. But you get the idea. The Germans were building here too. And as we're working our way through the East Prussian forests, this is a guard defense for the road, as you can hear right behind me. And this should have been built in 1940. With a little luck, we can get inside and see the build year. Heavy Panzerplatte for a machine gun facing the road. And a good two and a half meters of reinforced cement overhang. And I don't have to tell you how much I enjoy the fact that there's a steel dome, observation dome on top of it. Still in place, still intact. Very different from the Polish domes, a lot smaller. You can sort of see the Austro-Hungarian, you can sort of see the Prussian fort influence. See the smaller ones from Mutzik or from France, from pre-World War I. Inspiration, smaller, narrower observation domes. All watching the road down here. But with five, one, two, three, four, five observation ports. Five directions. So for me, it's curious to see if this was built before or after the attack on Poland. This was East Prussia. We're not far from what became Hitler's headquarters, some 30 kilometers to my rear, but to the front, in 1939, the Polish were building defensive bunkers. Let's we'll see if this was built before or after. If this was built in 1940, it was the Germans' defense towards the Molotov line of their possibly expected attack of Russia. And here's a close defensive position. Steel plate here is intact as well. That's actually rather impressive. Steel doors not. Ventilation pipes. This is German, so I should recognize some of this. 
Certainly I should have seen everything that goes in here. And uh, we don't talk about the bat. He's not going to do anything. He's fine. It's just a bird. It's a big sparrow. And here's the close defensive plate. The slide is missing, but and the wood is still intact. Ventilation is for the air filtration. Would have been mounted here. I wonder if there's a periscope in fairly good shape. All right, let's go on to fighting your partner. Say hi to the bat. See how he's doing. Bits and pieces are in place. And here's the console button from the inside. The actual mounts for the gun is missing, but this is a serious piece of hardware. Wow, this is 20, 30 centimeters thick. This is one of the this is one of the good ones. Not one of the later ones you'd see that are only 10 centimeters thick. Show you to see how this is the outside, and even the screws don't look rusty. They look like they would. You could mount that gun right on here. Looks like it's a little shrapnel damage, but don't see where that would be coming from. Now I believe there's a build here inscription in this somewhere. up here. Oh, that's hard to say. I hope that's not it. And here's the emergency exit. Full of branches. And oh wow. Oh, oh no. I thought the water tank was still here. And up here is the observation dome. I can't actually get into because the floor is missing. There'll be a little rung ladder or steel ladder leading to it, but it's there. Five observation ports. That would have been the ladder to this. Very cool. Uh, actually, look like they dug out the emergency exit at one point. to the expected Russian attack. It's always nice when dictators, they do business with each other. Everybody's paranoid, expecting everyone else to do exactly what you're about to do. Outside is the well of the emergency exit, right next to the entrance. I always thought having the emergency exits off to the side a bit, not by the front. It seems like a better idea, but that's just me. Right here on the road is a Heinrich bunker. They're quite common, quite common around here. A small shelter with a firing position in the opposite direction. These were simple to build, fairly inexpensive. They would defend the road from this direction. have here 
very simply is a road guard post. That would have been one door and then another. You had corrugated metal walls with cement on top. You had once a panza plata here and you had a, something like an MG34 depending on what you may have had available. It wasn't the thickest plate in the world. And outside there you also had the reinforced cement embracer of course. There's only two men serving in here. That's the road guard. Straightforward, radio telephone communication, and that's it. This is the kind of thing I had expected to see more of closer to Hitler's headquarters. These are straightforward, simple. There should have been numerous of these around the wolf's lair. This is the German command bunker that was built into the ground in 1944. Haven't quite seen anything that looks exactly like this, but here they were preparing for the attacking Russian army, and I'm impressed that they actually had time to build such great fortifications in 44, given everything that was going on and pressing on them. But it did seem, considering there is practically no fighting in a large part of this, it's very possible this bunker never saw any action. Quite possible it was never entirely completed, and it's equally possible that it was blown up by the crews before ever put into any active use. But it's still here, still part of another fortified line of bunkers from 1944. So they actually had time in 1944, just like outside Warsaw, prepares positions for the Russian advance. So it's a command shelter. And what makes it somewhat unique that is that must be the emergency exit. It is because there's metal rungs there that have been bent. Somewhere there's an entrance. It looks like a little... This actually looks a little tired. Unless... It's camouflaged. Hmm. I mean, it's well camouflaged now. One entrance, place for infantry communication, and there's no close defense. There's no close defensive points. Here are the stones for the door, the indents. And this is pretty much it, one large room. The emergency exit and ventilation. This was a command shelter. And what makes this special is that it was built in 1944 for just in time for the Russian advance. It's not particularly big. There is signs of some explosion in here. No shrapnel damage all the way up the wall. Could have been set off by the Germans themselves. I almost get the impression this looks like it hasn't been finished. And here you have wood, not steel beams, though that would be above that I would hope. Here's well over the doors, wood over the, between the steel beams, wood here and with. I'm wondering if this was ever 
even finished and put into use, there would be two cupolas here, somewhere. All this is wood, wood roof, somewhere there would be a cupola for a radio. Yeah, there's no steel in this. No steel beams. Something, I don't, I don't know if this ever made it into use. But yeah, certainly something shredded this. There was an explosion in here. I wonder if the Germans did not blow that themselves. Because this is fairly crudely built. It looks cheap and fast. Um, there were supposed to be a couple of cupolas here. I don't see any sign of those. I don't really see any signs of trenches or in infantry positions. I don't even see any signs of anything leading to this. Radio station, and command post. That's what it was supposed to be. I think it was about 668. During the war, as Hitler's complex itself grew, so did the fortified lines and bunkers surrounding Wolfschanze and East Prussia. And towards 1944, more lines were constructed as the Red Army now approached. It was here in East Prussia, the Red Army first time set foot on German soil proper, with the worst atrocities committed on women, children and the elderly, started with a mass rape and murder at the small village of Nimmersdorf, something well documented by International Red Cross then, and it would need its own episode. Thereafter, the Battle of Königsberg, where the German army fought until nearly completely wiped out. The local Gauleiter, Erich Koch, had banned civilians from fleeing the advancing Russians, resulting in the most terrible fates for these, and remnants of the German 3rd Panzer Army and the 4th Army was all that now stood between Hitler's headquarters and the three well-equipped Russian fronts pressing hard after Operation Gumbinen in October 1944. The Russians took heavy casualties and only made 30 to 60 kilometers advance until their reserves were exhausted. Now all which stood in the way was these small clusters of independent fortified areas surrounding Wolf's Lair, mostly consisting of five to six large bunkers in a cluster for mutual support, connected by trenches, of course. The position closest to the Wolfschanze consists of several of these. Most of them were blown up later, but one is in remarkable condition. The Russian attack began January 13th, but initially made slow progress. The main Wolfslayer bunkers were blown up by the SS task force on the 19th of January. The fortified town of Lutzen, or today Geschetsko, was one of the centers of resistance with its medieval fortress and bunkers, only 40 minutes drive from Wolf's Lair. Here the second army was being trapped and had to withdraw, as Wozniakowski had crossed the Narev on the 14th of January, and thereafter this line was reached by the Red Army. And times we have to go sneaking around a bit, and then you find what looks like a puck garage, maybe. No, no. This is a half buried shelter. Well, that's annoying. Why would they do such a thing? This would be the entrance. The Rear defenses. Try to go around front mm -hmm. and see if you can see what kind of thing. They don't crawl in here. Ah. Well, okay. I think this is a small defensive position. Just a one, like a machine gun. German, World War II, definitely. Oh, hell, Abba. No kidding. I thought I found this little thing on the back. <laughs> well, yes, blown up it was. Here's a steel dome. <laughs> That's a dome well, observation dome. 
very large destroyed shelter. All right, so it's a little more than a little park garage. I guess I was looking at one of the defensive embrasures. Not the thickest roof I've seen. I have no backstory on this. It is some kilometers from the others. There is a dome well, observation dome. This is a defensive position. And has a nice field of fire or view over the this is the dome. Here's the in the dome well. And pipes and all that goes with it. Reborn all. It looks reminiscent of. This is very reminiscent of what we've seen in the east wall. in the wall on the dome well here. <sighs> Who this belonged to? Who blew it up? I can't say. There's a Regelbau in the village about two kilometers, one kilometer from here. But we can't get to it. It was on private property. In a private house, I'm gonna respect that. The roof upside down. So this was not battle damage, this was actually blown up. Now, if this was blown up by the Germans themselves upon retreat, or by the Russians after capture, I do not know yet. So behind this hill is where the destroyed bunker is. And I will have to make a note, the fact that here's the rail line, and the other one is some hundreds of meters in the village behind it. So I can't help but think that this may have something to do with defense of the rail lines. This is absolutely the station master's house. Now please let there be something written on the wall somewhere. Yeah, but we're lucky enough that somewhere in here Hitler's train schedule is posted. Because oh. I am pretty certain that this house predates the bunker. So what did he see sitting in here? Well, she's gonna go up the staircase, and I'm gonna go down the staircase. Well, probably not. This house has been here way before the bunker, and I'm certain of that. I think it probably ran here for a while after as well. But there's not a whole lot of clues well, to anything. Why was this particular area defended by four or five Regelbau? I'm an idiot. It's not like I don't outweigh you by a lot. Alright. This 
This is a massive steel plate. A massive bunker with firing direction of the railroad. Probably stands for the camouflage nets here. With a huge flank. The emergency entrance. This is the emergency entrance. It's this must have been covered up at one point. We were supposed to cover up. This is almost must have been covered up to the ground level. I mean, close defense point. Lots of writing in this. This is very long damage. Tile floors. I mean, look at the floors on this. They actually have tile floors. Are you kidding me? Most offensive one has the slides there. This is a real fighting position. And speaking tubes. The only interesting thing is, this is not very thick. This is not as thick as you have seen, so sometimes they will screw on the plate, extra plate inside here. But of course they also have these cement outside. And the original color. And here was the rear defensive. This really was something else. The pencil plate here is missing. And right here is the emergency exit that literally was a ground level. That's something. That's very, that's very strange. Unless there was a dirt mound surrounding it. And house gun. All the original writing is still intact here. Steel plates. And here you see the heavy steel embrasure over the firing point. Pressure valve. I mean, why is this not a museum? Oh, bless you. Look at this. This was facing the railroad. That's all I can say. This is extremely well built. And we are about 12 minutes from Hayley's headquarters. So, it would be one possibility this has something to do with the perimeter defense, or this was one of the bunkers that built in 1939 or 1940 for defense in the area. He would have supply
and not far from town, from the very, very nice bunker, well preserved, is another one, some kilometer from the rail tracks, of this same fortified line. This has been destroyed. There are two more up in this forest that has equally been destroyed. This was a Regelbau, again built for defense. This line could also be said to be a flanking defense for Wolfslayer, which is about 15 minutes drive on dirt roads from here. This could be seen as a protecting the flank of the approaches to Wolf's Lair. So there's plenty of opportunities to have defended Wolfschanze, Wolf's Lair. What this was may be rather hard to discern. Let's see. Huh. It might not be easy. There's not a whole lot left of this. And the other two, unfortunately, are in the same state. But what I'm trying to show you by going here, there is, this is what fortified lines or bunker lines looked like many times. They weren't a long, continuous line for defense. They were small fortified regions, areas that could be easily defended in clusters of lightly avenues of approach of an enemy. So, wow, it's hard to see, but might go out on limb and say there might have been a dome here. It is a significant thickness, certainly not a small, cheap build. It looks fairly large. Looks like something we have seen. A one steel dome turret, a panzer plata couple of flanking defensive wings there. Let's go around to the front. Well, you see this is located on a small hill overlooking a slope, a little valley. Much of this vegetation would have been gone. You would have a good field of view. Possibly you could even see the other bunker downtown. Now, I would say there was a Panzerplatte here with a machine gun or an anti-tank cannon, a fairly large room here. One could also say, well, it looks like a pack garage, but it wasn't. If you look at where the heavy bolts have been to uh, anchor the heavy plate here. Yeah, so that's why I know it's not a tank garage or an anti-tank gun garage. They were defending this direction. This is looking over towards the railroad, southeast. Inside the bunker. At least now I know one thing that was here. Let's see if we can find another. Uh, at least an observation dome would have been here. At least not fighting well. Oh wait a minute. There's no this one. Oh but that's the writing on the wall. By Luther. This is a wow. Oh, there's a poem by Martin Luther here. Oh this is hard to read. Gonna have to work on that one. And down here as well. So faint, I almost can't read it here. That is original bunker writing. Original soldier's art from the Second World War. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's still preserved in here. Very, very, very nice. Second time I cut my leg on that piece of bar. Not piece of bar, but piece of bar.
But this was fairly large. Certainly. Good size crew in here. The inscription was really cool to see. Very, very cool. These two rooms, I can't, there's nothing else I can see in here, unfortunately. Very neat, that room. Alright, let's see if I can make my way up. Maybe, maybe on the other side, out here. Maybe. I can find a piece that has a shape to it. Oh, there's no pieces that way, they all went the other way. As I'm walking through the forest, this is the last one down the line, here all the way out here by the lake. And sometimes you really look around and you find surprises, large surprises, hidden, well hidden. It took me a while to see it because I keep looking for something protruding from the ground, not dug into it. And you can see we're only about a hundred meters from the lake. I would have thought it would be way too wet to dig in, but no. Looks in very good condition too. Damage from what I can tell. Well, let's see. Hmm. Amazing what's hiding sometimes. Corrugated metal. Maybe this is World War One. No. Maybe this is World War One. There used to be corrugated metal here mm -hmm. on the on the roof. There's somebody been scrapping that, but um, no inscriptions. Unfortunately, I would die for an inscription right now because I don't know what this is. Well, I know what it is, but. That's just surprising it's such a large shelter. And that's almost, the you say, be a firing position. Oh, close defensive, this is a piece of steel, no, it's brick. Huh. But this is named on the 1944 line and this certainly wasn't built for 1944. Huh. That's different. See there's the mounts for the pipes for the heater. The crates built in I don't think this is World War II construction. I think this is World War I. Or pre-World War I. So what's it doing here? Towards the end of January, the remains of the 3rd Panzer Army had been pushed into a pocket in Königsberg, which was now to be fought for, and only surrendered on April 9th. Whereafter the city lay in ruins, the civilians that still remained were preyed upon for months on end by the Red Army, who also blew up the remaining fortresses and some of the historic buildings that had survived the fighting in Königsberg. The city would never recover its former glory. A little farther away, we find another cluster of bunkers. 
again one large, well-armed Regelbauten and several smaller shelters and puck bunkers. And the fighting trenches are still crossing the forest floor. Now most of you have never seen this border precision, where most of the bunkers are still intact, and it gives you a really good idea how the front line was arranged and to be fought for. This line would have been reached by the Russian forces around February 10, 1945, and in some places the German forces had to withdraw tactically rather than to hold an untenable line of trenches and bunkers. And as many of the defensive positions were broken up into lines to defend particular points, here's another small group of bunkers consisting of six small bunkers in this position, two infantry divisions, two infantry positions, there's two pack bunkers, pack garages, two shelters like these, several of the small Koch shelters, one or two man machine gun positions, to defend this area. And this, from what I'm seeing, looks in pretty damn good condition. At least, from the fact that the rungs are still there, and there's an observation dome up top as well. And here you can really see what you can see from the steel dome. Observation dome. Obviously the farm here behind me is new, but you had a good field of vision here, and you had the fighting garages. You had several park garages in the woods over here. at the nice man over here. Actually, let me go in and have a look at it. So, that's what I'm going to do now. Although it looked like it had quite a bit of fire on it. There was some fire going on in here at some point. You had the steel doors here on top. You had, definitely had fire in here. Close defensive position. some remains left of parts of the steel door. I wonder how it ended up with a fire. It doesn't seem that it goes... Ooh, okay. So we have the ventilations. Pipes are still here. I guess writing... Ooh, actually. Some of the pipes are still here in place. Okay, I'm curious about this. I wish there was any writing on the wall, but that is obviously... No longer here from the fire. The ventilation pipes are in place. Wood towels are still there. Yeah, all the walls are completely charred. Very interesting how that have happened. Close defensive position. The slide is still intact, and we all know I just have to check. Oh, it's in place. It's locked in place. It's actually. Coming. No, this is. That's interesting. This is the slide. This is rust. This is not come. It actually looks like it's coming. It's coming apart. That's. I've never seen a piece of hardened steel like this come apart. I'm starting to think that was. This fire was hotter. You might have expected. All right, so looking at pressure tubes, the steel beams are in place. 
And here's the room with the emergency exit. Which is, this was never covered. With earth, earth and dirt on the sides, as we've seen before. And here, here is the steel dome. With the little slots to open up are still in place. That's very neat. That's neat that it's there. Five points. Ventilation in here. Uh, there should be a fighting compartment here with a steel plate. There is. Tons of plastic still in place. Bracer is still partly there. And this is one of the big, expensive ones. I wonder if he knows exactly how much steel he has here in value. I'm not going to tell him. You see, here we have a good, what is this, 30 centimeters at least. And, but this is one of the brackets that would start to put a shutter over here. Small observation forms. It's very cool. This is still here. This is actually one of the. This is one of the good plates, <laughs> if you will. And the fighting compartment. And a little step up here. It is very, very clean. If we look aside from the sad fact, there's been a fire. But everything is here. And steel domes here. I gotta go up top and visit the steel dome. And there's another room over here. Just one quick compartment. I'm wondering if there's one more fighting compartment and there's not because this is literally it with the overpressure tubes overpressure valves ventilation for what could have been a generator in here now it's habitat for an untold amount of very industrious spiders so the pipe is still intact Well-built Regelbauten. Now I just got to find out if this was built 44 or 3940. There's no... There really is no damage to this nice big steel plate here very nice and thick all intact should be in museum Now, I know I just said this was a pack garage, because I know there were supposed to be a few here. This just doesn't look like one. So now I'm intrigued. It must be a small crew shelter or command shelter. Let me see if I can make my way in here and uh, discover what this was. Okay. So this is something slightly different, slightly smaller. Hmm. Close defensive position. Big enough for one of those. Two entry doors. Uh, that's new. So this is a crew shelter. Oh, will you look at that? And I'm not talking about the shrapnel. 
Look at these bent steel beams. Where have I seen those before? Oh yes, pre-World War I Russian forts. S very similar. Not really uh, something I've seen in the German bunkers before, but this is what this is, and there's shrapnel damage on the wall. Somebody at some point in time tossed a hand grenade in here. Probably one of the Russians after the shelter had been left, just to make sure no one was hiding in here. And nothing, you can't really blame a guy to be too cautious. There's some more shrapnel damage in here. All of these arched steel beams. We'll talk a lot more about those. They're actually bolted together through the cement. So I don't actually can understand how that works. Unless they end there and they're bolted to after construction. Shrapnel damage on the wall. The close defensive point. You could convince me this was a World War I bunker, by the way. I, I know it's not, but you could convince me that it is. There's no mounts for the steel plate inside here. There should have been one. There should have been one. There should have been. No way to mount the plate there. there. Again, I wonder if this was not completely finished. Corrugated metal over the archway wood in the doorway and there's no no armored door here on this wood nothing was mounted on this wood yet so maybe the steel door was never mounted here so possibly this was a 1944 construction that was not finished this window slide i don't know what this was i don't know why there's an access here there wouldn't have been a weapon system here shouldn't be an access shouldn't be anything here it's a ventilation pipe that have eroded by now or the one from the bunker oven but it's interesting these wooden dowels here to hold the door that doesn't look like it was ever placed Even out here, there's no sign of the mounting for the steel plate that should have been there. Uh, the pipe on the other side is in better shape. And over here, these steel dowels, or wood dowels here, are also pristine. But there's actually one hole in this one, none in that one. So, they were to hold the steel door that didn't ever get placed from what I can tell. And let's see the shrapnel. Yeah, somebody tossed a grenade in here towards the back. And there's a paint scheme in here as well, they painted it. These look like they're embedded in the cement, just odd that they're screwed on or mounted to the sides as well. But this was a... Something was placed here. Because this is raw cement and then this is painted. So something in this shape, which is about the shape of beds. So this could have been oh, an 18 man shelter. See shrapnel damage here on the back wall. Even the corrugated iron up there is damaged. So it was a small non-fighting shelter. Let me see if I can. And here, but there's a bunker oven. That's where that pipe was for and it was leaking there. But that was in use. The bunker oven was in use. You look at the smoke there. So if that wasn't used, but there's no doors installed. That's rather interesting, isn't it? Let's see if we can get a look at that from the outside. It's not helping that there's a tree right in front of where that opening was. 
and it's a tree that has planted itself since blocking whatever that was but I don't see any ports or anything leading up so I'm gonna have to look at some drawings but infantry shelter it is the other one up there and then the next ones down here the trenches and the cock bunkers are so low here I don't know if we'll be able to find them and show them to you, but I'll try. And on the other side of the forest is the next shelter, 105C. That rings very little, very few bells to any of you. It's supposed to be a machine gun shelter. I can't exactly tell you much about it, except it is World War II. This was built World War II. You can tell because of the ventilation grates. This actually looks like a pack garage, where you'd have the AT gun in here and roll it out, facing out there where this possibly new road is that could have obscured the actual position. This is actually, this is exactly what this is. This is a pack garage. And you see these steel beams. These are thick. These are just like the Russian World War I shelters, drilled in place. I don't understand why they have to be drilled in place. They must be, see, they go all the way into the into the cement. So they should be holding. There should be any, no reason to actually bolt them on. A little overkill, but it's, it's so unlike the Germans to over-engineer things, isn't it? roof line, even the roof line is shaped for a strange reason. And then there'll be what one room in here. And you see in these generation shelters you have actually have the indents in the walls from where there would be two beds here. Or shelves. I'm I'm gonna go only and say it could be beds, could be shelves. I, I don't see this as a crew bunker where the crew would sleep. And here's this port again that I've never seen in anything before. What was this port used for? Um, you, all, you can see how thick the walls are. Uh, reinforced cement, but in this direction it's where the other bunkers are. On this line. So shelf for radio, ventilation. There would have been a door here and there would have been a gate in front of the cannon itself. So they should be able to close it and keep warm in some way. See the wooden a little soft actually it doesn't look bad. The frame. Then I see some shrapnel here too. Some damage for something that looked like shrapnel. Again, I could see them having been the Russians showed up after this possibly abandoned toss a grenade in here just in case But these are different Obviously This would have been For the ventilation from the bunker stove There would have been a door in here and from the screws there was at least a door uh, there are indents in the wooden towels. I would think there would have been a wooden door here. And in the Panzer garage, the same. There would have been a gate of some sort. Might not have been a heavy steel door, but just to keep the crew warm. And here this again. It cannot have been an emergency entrance or exit. Well, that would, for this to have been an emergency exit needed would be ridiculous. There's a door, and where the cannon goes out is another door. There would be no need for this, and it will be a very small crew. Very interesting in design. Thick walls. Speaking of interesting design, what is that little alcove here? All I can think of is for water runoff, but that's damn elaborate just for that. So 
sometimes you have a grenade shoot, somebody toss a grenade on top, but that's not it for this. Way too small for anything like this. I don't understand this. There's no reason for anybody to crawl up or out there. A little pencil cross. For a little puck. I'll say 36. We can probably put something slightly larger in there. Puck 36 will certainly fit in here. Maybe a 38 or 40. I almost, I almost think that it's it will be too big. Might stick out a little bit, but it's hard to tell. I would have to measure it, but let me figure the specs of a water and AT guns possibly could fit in here. So we are about 200 meters from the puck garage when we get to the next. And what is so amazing about this particular sector is everything looks different than I've seen anywhere else before. Except for that large crack that looks somewhat familiar. This is rather large. This is quite large, isn't it? This was blown up. Yeah, this was definitely blown up. It looks like a shelter with a couple of large rooms. Let's go have a look at this. And remember, this whole area is highly connected with trenches and these small rock shelters. Speaking of, the trenches. This whole area is highly dependent on an elaborate trench network that runs through here and the cock shelters, the smaller bunkers that are very hard to find. It's the other side of this. This definitely was blown up from the inside. And here's another one of these access windows, emergency exits, not sure what to call it. This is very interesting. Corrugated metal over the door. Well, it's been rattled around a bit. Lots of shrapnel, of course. There's a close defensive point here towards the door. As you can just barely see, here the corrugated metal have come down and blast the inside of that window. Looks like two large rooms. This is exactly the same as the first one we saw. That it is. This is the same. Except this is dismantled in its key components. That's what we're seeing. Yeah. Well, let's get a little better look at the construction of all this. The garbage dump here. See here the where the steel arches would have been. Here's the end of it and see exactly how that worked. This is identical to the first shelter. Two rooms, an entrance, and that little window. Large blast here in the center. See, I don't know what they put inside, but they blew it with some amount of explosive. So these are literally just going end to end of these steel beams. And World War II bunkers, I very rarely see curves like this. There's a lot of, a lot more work goes into curving a steel beam, that's what they would have met, than a, just a straight over, like in the regular bow. 
it gives me the idea that maybe this was an earlier construction but it's uh, a little hard for me to say that at this point here's the demolished shelter and the trench I'm just curious maybe this will dead end into a machine gun position where there is one of those shelters since they are so numerous but of course once buried it's almost impossible to find if they get covered up by time and forced and you have to disregard the forest and the feet yes there's a cock shelter damn yes <laughs> there it is that's how they did it. That's the whole defensive line. There's more of them over here. Sunk in the ground. It is clear where the front line were, where the trenches, interspersed with small cock shelters, was hurriedly dug in to defend a line across the terrain. And looking from a forest outcropping, probably placed in a tree line before open fields wouldn't be able to see any of this. Of course the trenches are hidden and the shelter was covered. There could have been a machine gun ring on here. It could just be an observation point. It could be a lot of different things. A little entrance below level as well. Or below the top level. And then just running into the forest and back to the bunker. I stood on that hill there for a minute. I'm just curious. Let's see if we can see any more. Hiding here. Yes. Any one over here? Oh, the trench continues. So this was 1944 construction. Well, the trench now ends in this forest where they're planting new trees. Here, the Germans went back in 1944 to a cheap, easily defensive positions. Not a long stretch of trenches and bunkers, but a Stellungskrieg where they would build sectors that was individually defended and fought for. At least that was the intention. And remember, we're only an hour and a half from Rastenburg, where Hitler was when this was being built. And the next one is, well, very well placed, right next to the railroad, making me wonder if there was a railroad here at the time. Because if there was, I would go out on a limb and say, there are several of these protective sectors, bunkers, clusters, placed around railroad uh, tracks, junctions. So, and this is, from what I can see, the rail track leading south and up to where Himmler's uh, SS bunker complex was. And here's one of those little windows from here it could look like an emergency exit I just have a really hard time with this being so especially if this is a park garage and it is of the other design why would this ever need an emergency exit at ground level it has two already but this is what it is right here next to the rail line and I would be surprised if this rail line was not here. You'd roll the cannon out of here into a circle and place it firing that direction. So this whole defensive line is pointing roughly southwest, not actually east. Let's have a look at it, see if we're lucky enough there's any writing in it. So how deep is this? I now would like to know. All right, this is low. I can't stand up straight in here. Um, 
power steel beams. What is this? Four meters long, maybe, inside. Maybe only three. It's not a very deep room. Same paint scheme, painted white inside. Don't understand why this is here. I will find out soon though. Again, you would think this is where the bed posts would have been. And the wooden door. The door down up there. With a step up to where the pack would have been. This could also have been shelves of ammunition that would make far more sense if it was so. Which of course means that the crews would be sleeping nearby. Corrugated metal, the entrance, no damage, no shrapnel. Just exactly what it is. And here further in between the bunkers you have more of the trenches. Now if we follow the trenches, maybe we'll get to another cough bunker. Light six act pattern right out of World War One or today. Figure being in the trench line, I would eventually find another right here. Nice little one or two man observation machine gun shelter, a car bunker sunk into the ground. It would be very hard to see. I do imagine this forest is probably newer than World War II, but there it is. And it's funny when you think of the newest evolution, mass produced, reinforced, easy to hide and deploy. It's a little bit like a pop hunter, isn't it? History doesn't change, it just evolves. And it's just one continuous line that runs between the bunkers, interspersed by these small strong points. I would imagine. There's another one. So for every 50 meters of trench line, about 50, 60 meters in between, there's a cock bunker, probably with an MG, and the trenches just continue. That is how the defenses will run here. Why, if this was staggered, it must have been staggered in depth in several lines because the first puck bunker is a good three, four hundred meters in this direction in front of this trench line. So, they had several trench lines with pillboxes and machine gun positions in dispersing. That was the defense of this sector. As the trench is coming down here, the other bunker that is blown up is over there, and here's the next box shelter. And the placement of the bunkers from the trenches gives us some idea of the depth of the fighting position. There are several hundred meters in between the dispersal of the first pack bunker to the trenches further to the rear gives me an idea that further to the rear from that, there would be more. However, a little further to the rear is something else. Further back from here, following the railroad, there's an interesting find. East Prussia was a hub of many things, including fabrication and arms manufacturing. Not far from this fortified line, and not far from Hitler's lair, was a munition factory and a very large storage facility for munitions. Clearly this is from the Second World War, but it also apparently continued its usage for munition production and storage long after. Not much, if anything at all, 
is known of this place. So we had to go in and take a look to get an idea of what this was. And heavily guarded. We're going to try to find out where it was made and how. The second indication that there's something in here is the second security gate to an area that has a very large fire station assigned to it. And the fun part is that the words chemicals and munitions have been used in describing this complex and that nobody really knows what it was. So, we're going to go see if we can find out the old fire station. It's been a while since that's been in use last. But that is exactly what this is. The loading platform. Interesting enough, it is surrounded by dirt mounds on all sides. Why would you need to surround the loading platform with dirt? Don't see any sign of rail. And just trying to identify things here. How many of you have seen a cement light post? Anybody on that? And there's the first sign of something man-made. A little bridge, I suppose. A little tunnel. That is well, another tunnel. Camouflaged. Dirt on top. Not, not bomb-proof in any way. This is camouflage. Here's a dirt mound. Now I know what this is. I've seen this before. This looks like the World War I munition production facility in Jutborg, where they would have munition produced and stored in these buildings, all individually wrapped by dirt mounds for protection. So this was probably the production facility. It could have been the storage facility as well. I'll see when we get inside. This looks more like storage. These are probably going to be all throughout off the main road. Then the trucks would come up here and load and unload. And everything is protected by these, making it hard to see from the road, of course. B1-37. And I think this was used after the war by somebody who wrote this that looks like what, Polish? What is all these for soy? Two exactly the same. And there's probably going to be a whole bunch of these until we get to the actual production facilities. Some drainage on one side. Of course, they have to be elevated because you don't want any kind of moisture to come close to munitions or explosives for obvious reasons. How's it next? So the trucks could just drive through and pick up or drop off. So the fun part is, where do they drop off and pick up from? There was an electrical thing here that was protected. And here after the row of munition shelters is the water reservoir for firefighting. One of the specialties of especially the Russians and allies is the lightning rod that you see on practically all buildings, but certainly these munition storage buildings 
you would absolutely want to have lightning deflected into the ground, and that is exactly what this is. To me, it looks like a little bigger, a little longer, doesn't it? The building? Yeah, it does. This is longer. Exactly the same. Through a gate, huge dirt mound, longer storage facility, and a lightning defector. But yeah, this is a bigger building. What does that say? Uh, that smoking is forbidden as from Mm. Yeah, don't throw the boxes full of munitions and don't smoke. You know what? Some things should go without having to be explained. Hmm. There's the exit of the last storage shelter. There's something sitting here. I would almost think it looks like a large piece of cement. It could be a guard tower. I think it may be a guard tower, honestly. But if it is, then this is this is a cock shelter. So now we know this was World War II. This is one of the cock shelters. It was built by Gauleiter Koch for the 1944 battle against the Russians. See, this is the entrance, the bottom is just sitting on its side. So if that's here, certainly this was in use for World War II. So now we know that. And here along the road is the next turned over cock shelter. So at least now we know what they were using for guard posts for this facility. There's a lot of these. Still can't find the manufacturing plant though. And see so the roads here also definitely built during the Second World War. And at some point somebody was in a hurry. Because here you can see the footsteps of all the people who were here after it had been poured and was still wet. I always thought it was interesting to see. You actually see there's a layer of tar underneath these. You may remember some of the roads constructed around Wolf's Lair. They too had been hurriedly made full of footprints. I found this an interesting coincidence, telling me that this might have been constructed by the same people around the same time. Uh, several more loading platforms and it does appear that there could have been a rail link down here at one point. And leading up to the gate, you have a set of double gates, barbed wire here. And I'll bet you somewhere there was also a guard tower. But the actual production halls, we still have been able to find. And then suddenly, we figured there's a hole in the ground. But they're very sloping staircase that nobody's been using for a while. And we all know what I'm hoping to see, but I'm being realistic. Something like this would have above ground production facilities. It's a little wet and steel, heavy steel door here. until there's an emergency edge. So what you have here is a little shelter with an emergency hatch. Just a little hallway here. I guess the thing started exploding. There's a place for people to get into. Interesting. Steal the order of the little peephole, which 
which is unusual, but then it is definitely a shelter. The other one with a peephole as well. Intriguing. And somebody really must have been in a hurry. Because there's footsteps embedded in a lot of this road. And in case you haven't noticed, this is what we would call a German road. It was built by the Germans around the time of World War II. And we are about an hour and a half drive from Hitler's headquarters of Wolfschanze. After circling the many, many, many bunkers, we still never found the actual facility where the munitions were produced. There is more to do in the research department on this, but this was a huge complex. And as you can see, there's much more here than just Hitler's bunkers. There's a lot more fortified lines and bunkers and battlefields I hope to take a closer look at in the coming year. Never know what you might find out here. Behind me is Vanna von Braun's first test stand. Down the road is Diebner's nuclear reactor. Over there is the Maginot Line and all its amazing forts. I'm visiting them all and I'm bringing them to you. So I really appreciate you like, follow and share what I'm doing trying to document all these important historical locations. And if you feel like you want to watch more pictures or documents that are used for these, go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out with my travels, because gasoline and travel and air for you is expensive, my PayPal is there, protectionserviceint.com. You are more than welcome, but you don't have to. I appreciate all your support and all your help, and I love seeing these locations, and I love bringing them to you.